Hello grade 11s and grade 12s. In today's video, we're going to be looking at electrostatics and in particular, an electric field question. Remember to subscribe for more questions like this. I go over past paper questions, exam questions. I do theory videos for maths and physics. I hope to see you in videos in the future, but let's jump right into this video. So we've got two identical metal spheres, P and Q. They give me the charge of each and they give me the distances between their centers. They also give me X over here, which is a point that is 10 millimeters from sphere Q. To find the term electric field. So first off, we have a definition. You need to study your definitions. You need to know them off by heart or you'll lose two marks. These are easy marks. Now in this question, my definition is looking for electric field at a point. And that definition is this one over here. It is the electrostatic force experienced per unit positive charge placed at that point. And I just wanted to show you the exam guidelines here behind me. In electric fields, you have two definitions, electric field and electric field at a point. These are two different definitions and you need to give the correct definition depending on what they're asking for. So this question asks for electric field at a point, which is why I gave this green definition over here, not this definition. 7.2 says draw the resulting electric field pattern surrounding P and Q. Now you need to consider the nature of the charges. So whether it's positive or negative charge or positive, positive or whatever, P is positively charged and so is Q. And you should know that the resultant electric field pattern, what that looks like because they're both positively charged, they both have the same charge is like this. The field lines repel one another like this. They must not touch, they must not cross each other. And very important, the arrows must point away from the spheres because remember the direction of an electric field is the direction that a positive test charge would move if it were placed at a point. So because P is positive, a positive would move away from P. Because Q is positive, a positive test charge would move away from Q. That's why the arrows point away. And just to show you how we mark, we give you a mark for the correct shape. So you see how it like bends away here, how it bends away here. And then it's almost straight over here in these regions over here, correct direction. So the field lines must be directed away from the positive charge. Lines must not cross and must touch the spheres. So if you do floaters, what we call floaters, so like something like this, we don't give you the marks because these lines are not touching the sphere. Also, the lines mustn't cross each other. So be careful that your lines don't overlap each other, you know, later on, something like that. We will minus marks. And if you draw a net electric field pattern for two unlike charges, so that's where they go together like that, you get zero. My next question says we must calculate the net electric field at point X. Now, if you take a look at this diagram, what we mean by net, another word for net is resultant. And another word for resultant is overall. Now, what this means is at point X, there will be an electric field due to Q and an electric field due to P. How this works is as follows. Imagine Q is not here. So imagine it's not here for a second. Imagine you just consider P. P's field lines extend all the way like this in 3D space. And there's an electric field felt at X because of P. Same thing as Q. Pretend P is not there. Q's electric field lines extend outwards like this. And there's an electric field felt at X because of Q. So we need to use or we need to work out the electric field due to P and the electric field due to Q, and we need to add them together to give me the electric field at X. Now, when I say electric field, this is so, so, so important, grade 11s and grade 12s. My question asked me to calculate the net electric field, not electrostatic force, electric field. So what that means is if you use the incorrect formula, let's pretend you use this formula, you will get zero for that question because this formula is used to calculate electrostatic force. So the formula that I'm going to use is this one over here. Why am I going to use this one and not this one? They both have E in them. I have explained this in a video, which I'll link in the description box below, but we use this formula to calculate the electric field at a point due to a charge. So the Q in this formula is the charge that creates the field. So we would use this formula for, and we would sub Q in for charge P 
and we would do a separate formula, the same formula, but a new one, a separate one, for the charge of Q. It's the charge that creates the field. This formula that I use over here, this Q is different. This is the Q that we place within the field that experiences a force when it's placed within a field. It's not the charge that creates the field. I hope that makes sense. I do explain this in my video. So if you want to go check that out, please go check that out. But basically, I'm going to make use of this formula. I'm also given distances, so it makes sense to use this one. So this is essentially the formula that I'm going to end up using. Electric field due to P, electric field due to Q. We will apply the formula separately and then add it together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it up into two separate parts. I'm going to do here the electric field due to P and the formula that I'm going to use, KQ over R squared. And I'm going to do a separate formula for the electric field due to Q. Same formula, but it gets its own substitution because it's going to use its own values. So if I work out the electric field due to P, what I use is the charge of P. And I use the distance between P and X. Okay, so this entire distance over here. So K is a constant. It's given on the formula sheet. It's 9 times 10 to the power of 9. The Q that I use is the charge of P because I'm working out the electric field due to P. So I use 5 times 10 to the negative 9. And then again, the distance that you use is the distance between P and X which is not just 20 millimeters, it's not just 10 millimeters, it's 20 plus 10. It's 30 millimeters. And please remember that distance must not be in millimeters, it must be in meters, so we need to convert. So I get 0, 0,03 meters, and please remember that we need to square that value because my formula says R squared. So we get that, and you can leave it like this, or you can work it out, get me an answer, but we need to do it separately for the electric field due to Q. So I've substituted in the charge of Q, and now just be careful, the distance that I use is the distance between Q and X, which is 10 millimeters. So again, convert to meters. So I worked out the answers. I got 50,000 over here and 450,000 over here. Now, what is the unit? The unit for electric field is Newton per coulomb newton per coulomb if you ever forget what the unit is for electric field remember the following formula electric field is also equal to force divided by charge what is force measured in newton what is charge me measured in coulombs newtons divided by coulombs so you got this if you take coulombs up to the top of the fraction it becomes n dot c to the power of negative one, Newton per coulombs. Now, I need to put those numbers, 50,000 and 450,000 into this formula. However, to decide if we must add them together or if I must subtract them, it depends on the direction of the electric field. So this is how you figure it out. What you do is you pretend that you are a positive test charge and you are placed at X. Because remember, the direction of an electric field at a point is the direction that a positive would move. So what I do is I pretend to put a positive test charge at X. Pretend to put a positive here. Now, ignore P for a second. Look at Q. Q is positive, and I've just put a positive test charge here. Which way would this positive test charge move because of Q? This positive test charge would want to move away from Q. It'll want to move to the right because like charges repel. So it'll want to move to the right. Then we do the same thing, but with P. So ignore Q now, ignore Q. If I had to put a positive charge, okay, a positive test charge at X again, and we know that P is positive, which way will this one want to move because of this one? X, the positive test charge placed at X, once again, would want to move away from P. So again, to the right. So they're both moving in the same direction, which means I would add them together. So therefore, the net electric field would be 50,000 plus 450,000. It would be 500,000 newtons per coulomb. And your direction, your ultimate direction, would be to the right.
However, in my question, they just wanted magnitude. So I didn't even have to bother with direction, but I just wanted to show you how to get direction anyway, just in case they don't say magnitude. So remember, if they say magnitude, no direction needed. 7.4, hence. So hence, when you see hence in a question, it means that it's kind of following off of the previous question. So hence, calculate the magnitude of the electrostatic force. So you're looking for F that an electron will experience when it is placed at point X. Now, remember what we discussed earlier when we were discussing the formulas. We discussed that if I place at, at point X, I just worked out the net electric field. I worked out the electric field at X and it was 500,000 newtons per coulomb to the right. Okay? So I know at that point, that is the electric field. Now, if I place a certain charge at that exact point in that field, I can work out the force that that charge will experience when placed at that point. And in order to do that, I use the second formula for electric field, which looks like this. It is this formula over here. So this formula is when I know the electric field at a certain point and I want to work out the force that a particular charge would experience if I put it at that point. And what is the charge that I'm talking about in this question that I'm putting at that point? An electron. So do we know Q? Do we know the charge of an electron? Think carefully. Yes, we do. The charge of an electron is given to you on your formula sheet. Charge of an electron, E, negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. So if you take a look at my formula and what I have and what I don't have, we have electric field at point X. We are looking for the electrostatic force at point X. And we have Q, it's the charge of an electron. So when I substitute into this formula, we do not need to substitute the electron in as a negative charge. We can substitute it in as a positive charge because the negatives don't mean anything in this formula. We can figure out direction by looking at the field. So charge of an electron, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19, Force is what I'm looking for. Electric field at point X is that. You say 500,000 times the charge of an electron. And I get 8 times 10 to the negative 14 Newton. Remember, force is measured in Newton. Now, again, they just want magnitude. So I don't need to give a direction. However, if I were to give a direction, what would my direction be? Now, remember, my direction of my electric field was to the right. However, remember the direction of an electric field is the direction that a positive charge would move. So a positive would move to the right. But an electron, is an electron positive? No, an electron is negative. An electron is not a positive charge. An electron is a negative charge. So if the direction of the electric field is to the right, an electric field is what a positive would do then an electron, the force on the electron would be to the left. I hope that makes sense. And I hope that this question was helpful. Let me know what other questions you want, what other past paper questions you want in the comments. Hope to see you in another video very soon. Bye everyone.